We're coming to you from the Grassy Valley Stage Pulpit in Knoxville, Tennessee. We are an outreach ministry of Grassy Valley Baptist Church, and we're located on the corner of Lovell Road and Kingston Pike. I saw something really interesting, the, uh, the word Hollywood, mm -hmm. when, they, when, they, when they made a magic wand, it's made of Hollywood and it's for casting spells. <laughs> well, if you, if you look at the net result of the media that's coming out, the, yes. the, the movies and the TV series and all yeah. these things, you will become desensitized to sin according to the Bible and in a sense, you're being uh, you're, a spell is being cast over you. You become less uh, prone to say that's that's terrible. I shouldn't be watching that. Right. You're drawn in. Right. There was a show called Friends. Yes. And uh, there was an awful lot of promiscuity. Right. And switching partners and. And it was all during with laughter and joking and we're yes. good friends and yep. The biblical term would be fornication. Right. And they turned it into a comedy. Right. right. And uh, so. Yeah. Like what, it, harm, what harm can this do? You know, look, yeah. they're having fun, you know. Yeah. yeah. That's the, and it's, it's desensitized us to the, to the teachings of God. Now the, the Puritans or the, you know, the, the, the strict biblical folks would, they would, they would be, they would probably be mocked in today's culture. Right. They'd be mocked as rigid and, and uh, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, you're too conservative. Yeah. You're, you know, you're not having any fun and, yeah. you know, you're trying to keep <laughs> me from, you know, living my life and having fun and yeah. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know, I've got relatives there. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somewhere a um, standard has to be adopted. Yep. And uh, it, it appears God's going to allow us to choose our our standards, but He has promised to impose the consequences. Right. He's not going to He's not going to change. He'll let us choose, and then He'll say, "Well, you've chosen this, so here are your consequences." Right. You've chosen this, so here are your consequences. Yeah. And I'm I, I do believe in God. I believe He's going to yeah. be the final authority. Uh, in, well, uh, even with Adam and Eve, they suffered the consequences for all of mankind. Uh, but you know, they didn't believe. You know, they like here again. The serpent said, "Are you really certain that He said you were going to die?" Well, the serpent knew that it wasn't going to be a physical death; that it was going to be a spiritual death. Yes. But He didn't mm. bother. You know. Oh. telling Adam and Eve that, but, you know, he left them off on their own to make their own choice, but he was very deceptive. So that's what we're experiencing today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we struggle with that each and every day. Um, do we need to give some scripture concerning well, sin? I mean, real uh, quickly and kind of, you know, give people something to look at. I would, I would start with Romans. Yeah. In, in the book of Romans, Paul outlines clear examples of sin in uh, uh, chapter 1 of Romans and let's see here I'll start at verse 18 for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because that which is known about God is evident within them for God made it evident to them uh, we see godliness and ungodliness right. being contrasted or let, righteous. Let, Go ahead. Yep, let me give you another, uh, which is a complimentary, because he talks mm -hmm. a little bit further on up in Romans 5, 12. Okay. Therefore, yes. just as through one man sin entered into the world, he's talking about Adam, yes. and death through sin... And so death spread to all men. Well, you know, he's talking about obviously yes. Adam and Eve and, you know, handed it down because all sinned. Verse 13, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is now imputed when there is no law. Mm -hmm. So the law points us to sin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 14, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moses even over those who had not sinned in the likeness of the offense of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. So, you know, Moses gave God's law 
to mm-hmm. the Jewish people mm-hmm. so that they would recognize, hey, we're sinning against a holy God. Mm-hmm. So we can't do away with the law. And that's not what I'm prescribing to when we were talking earlier. Right. The law is there to show us sin. But the serpent has gotten into the law and twisted it to the point yes. that we no longer know one end from the other. And truth is mangled to the point that we don't recognize the truth in the law. I have a, a, a point that's just come to mind while you've been describing this. Yeah. The serpent said to Eve, you will not surely die. Yeah. God himself said, you will surely die in the right. day that you eat this fruit thereof. So there's a, uh, who are you going to believe, God or the serpent? Right. All right. Well, in Romans 5 here, it says, uh, as through one man's sin entered into the world and death through sin. So uh, to make a long story short here, it looks like people have been dying since Adam sinned. Yes. Adam and Eve eventually died. It says they may have lived 900 and something years, but they eventually died. So we can conclude there is a death penalty that's associated with sin. Mm -hmm. I'm going to die. You're going to die. Everyone's going to die. Well, and Scripture tells Mm -hmm. us that uh, the the triune God said to themselves, you know, we need to get them basically out of paradise unless they eat from the tree of life, meaning they'll live forever. Yes. We can we can see that clearly God's word is uh, in full horse. Mm-hmm. The, the, the death is all, I mean, people die every day and uh, it's appointed unto each of us wants to die. But uh, the idea was it's associated with sin. Mm-hmm. And so sin is something that uh, we want to really, we want to acknowledge what it is. And, well, and, uh, and that's why we will have eternal life after death. Yeah. You know, if we're a believer of Christ and we follow yeah. him, we'll be giving, given new bodies and then yeah. we'll have eternal life. What? But this mortal body that we're currently in, we're born into sin. Mm-hmm. And so we are appointed to die and we yeah. have no choice in that. That was ordained from the beginning of time with Adam and Eve. He not, mm-hmm. We not only suffered a spiritual death, we suffered this, the physical death because we weren't allowed to eat by God yes. to the to the um, tree of life tree to give us life. eternal life. We so we were kicked out mm-hmm. of the garden, not mm-hmm. only to suffer the spiritual death, but the physical death, like you're saying. Yes. Um, so, but eventually, you know, if we make the choice and uh, we're bent towards God and we accept him as our Lord and Savior and follow after him, we have the promise of eternal life. Mm-hmm. And we know that we'll be given a new body that will last eternally. We'll, mm-hmm. We will eat from the tree of life and have yes. eternal life. If, if I understand this properly, we had eternal life initially. Yeah. And we decided to sin. Mm-hmm. And we, we forfeited eternal life. Well, it's, it's a wonderful thing to hear that God offers eternal life again. Yes, he always gives us a chance. And we never, we are never without an opportunity as long as we're on this side of the dirt. (laughs) What what would happen to me if I decided to just continue living in sin and uh, reject Christ Jesus? What would happen to me? Yeah. Die. I would die. I would die physically. Yeah. And then I would die. Spirit, the, well, our the second death. It's yeah, uh, well, talk to, yeah, the spiritual torture. Yeah. yeah. Being absent from the Lord. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of people will talk about, you know, fire and brimstone. And I know it's in the scripture. And I know, yeah. you know, it's eternal damnation. I understand what scripture says. Mm-hmm. But I'm more concerned. I'm not, I'm not worried about the consumption of fire. And, you know, we'll be able to feel everything and, and suffer and, and the pain. What worries me is being separated from him. That's a good point. I, I, yeah. I am more as a Christian, yes. now that I'm aware of the truth, yes. I see the benefits of it. And being separated <laughs> from him, I, yeah. I can't. That's what bothers me for eternity. That would be the greatest loss a human could experience is to be yeah. separated from our creator or I mean, father. If, what have we got to lose by 
you know, we've got a choice to make here. <laughs> it's black and white. It, it's yeah. like, why would you have any doubt and be agnostic or be atheistic yeah. when you could be bent towards something that would give you eternal life and joy and happiness. Well, that's what's at and, stake. Yeah. Uh, happiness or, or true joy. True it, joy, yeah. True joy. The tr and to know the truth. Mm, truth, If nothing yes. else, to know the truth of this world and the purpose mm -hmm. that we have. Yeah. What if there's something far greater than we can even comprehend? Yeah. And it's ours for the taking. God's offering it to us. If we just make a choice. We make a choice. You know. The alternative, let's choose pleasure for a season, sinful things in this world, have at it, have all you want. But in the end, you forego this eternal life and this right. inheritance God has. Right. So it's really worth some real careful thinking, some, some of the yeah. uh, clearest thinking you've ever done concerning this, because eternity is a long time to think about right. what you should have done. Well, when we talk about sin, we, we need to make it very clear just to kind of summarize this. But when we're talking about sin, we're talking about making a decision. We're not talking about a little white lie or, mur you know, whether you murder somebody because Jesus told us when we look at somebody mm -hmm. and we, with hate, we've killed our brother or sister, you know. Yes. So he has set us an extremely high standard. So it's mm -hmm. either are you going to follow, um, and, and we know that the law points us towards sin. So are yes. you going to use the cultural law, which is, it, it, it fails oh. us in any society. I mean, you can yeah. go back and look at history and cultural law that is set by man's standard has always failed us. Yeah. Scriptural law mm -hmm. that God gave us has been a forever standard. Yes, you know, it's, and it's, changed. It's, it's never changed. It's always mm -hmm. been consistent. And uh, it, it always works for when a society goes by it because we can look back at the Jewish nation in first and second Kings and it's not every King was a good ruler, but whenever we follow God's law, mm -hmm. the society or the culture, the Jewish culture was rewarded by it. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. we've got examples in the mm -hmm. Bible of when we follow a bad example yes. and when we follow a good example. Yes. And so if we will just, look at the word sin and take it a little bit more seriously and look at it, at it from the perspective of how God sees it and not how man sees it, it might put things in perspective. And even if you aren't a believer, wouldn't it be a better standard to follow by to, <sighs> to, to that if everyone could follow it? And the only way that that's going to happen is if we have leadership in our culture that believes in that as well, too. Godly leaders. Godly leaders, God. or at yeah. least people that will follow the Judeo-Christian belief system, you know, yeah. do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I mean, the Beatitudes yes. in Matthew 5. I mean, yes. just following that in oh, our culture yeah. would change it dramatically. Yes. Oh, those are wonderful laws And to for live by. those who aren't following that continue to insist on sinning, mm -hmm. the homosexuality, the murderers, the liars, the cheaters, the stealers, shame on you for putting it out there to our kids oh. and to our, uh, you know, to our elderly and to the young people that are growing up. You know, this yes. word inclusive, mm -hmm. I am so tired of hearing, you know, God is inclusive. <laughs> yes. He believes mm -hmm. that everybody that sin is his child, you know, but I'll be darn if I'm going to be inclusive of someone that's sinning. Yeah. If we don't point out the sin, yeah. if we don't point to the naked king, then we will become naked ourselves. We will be, we will transgress a holy God. Yeah. And we're going to degrade our society through our families. Our families will become degraded. 
So, uh, you know, I, just shame on you. I mean, you know, if you're transgender, I love you. If you're a homosexual, I love you to death. I love you the way God loves you. Mm. But I don't see, I see you the way God sees you, and that's sinning against him. Mm. Yeah. And I can't be inclusive or accept your sin. In other words, I can love the sinner, just not the sin that you're committing. That's right. We, will, we want people to come to the knowledge of the truth. And it, this uh, speaks of a suppression of the truth. Yeah. Suppressing the truth as to what's right and what's wrong as, as God states. Right. And uh, uh, it's possible to literally suppress the truth concerning God, but you can't suppress God's truth forever. It'll, no. keep, it'll come back. It, it will mm. definitely come back. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's anything that's trendy. Yes. And I use the word trendy. Even in culture, cultural beliefs and uh, this word inclusive, it's, mm -hmm. it's all trendy. It's all going to go mm -hmm. away eventually and something mm -hmm. else will come up, you know. Yeah. Um, that's why I say, you know, we, we have a tendency to sway around when it comes to what the word, the meaning of the word sin is. Mm -hmm. And God clearly defines mm -hmm. our creator, the one that put us here, the one, the, the person that knit us in our mother's womb yes. <laughs> is the one who defines what sin is and what truth, you know, what the truth is about sin. So there's your ultimate standard. And that one yeah. is going to hold true for yeah. eternity right there when yeah, what God absolutely. says. So, mm -hmm. you know, folks, point yourself towards um, point yourself towards if 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 you don't if you don't want to point yourself mm -hmm. towards God, point yourself towards something that is um, a standard that, you know, we all can follow by, that we mm -hmm. all can benefit from, that we all mm -hmm. can feel joy from. Because, you know, I don't want anyone to push their beliefs on anyone else, mm -hmm. even Christians. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there is a standard somewhere that we all need to follow in our culture, mm -hmm. in our society. Mm -hmm. And God loves whoever it is. God loves you in a way that is beyond your comprehension. He doesn't love what you do. He doesn't mm. love the sin that you do towards him, but he loves you as a person. And I think this trendiness that's going on with homosexuality and transgenderism and all, it's a crying out for mm -hmm. identity. Yes. And our identity is not going to be found in cultural beliefs. Our identity is going to be found in a holy God who loves us unconditionally. He just doesn't love how we sin against him. That's it. He's, he's made um, uh, a way for us to return to him. And uh, what we couldn't do or wouldn't do ourselves, he's done for us. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah. he commands us to repent all men when Jesus began his earthly yeah. uh, ministry the first words repent right for the kingdom of heaven is at hand he's here and he's not going to alter his standards uh, because our culture doesn't accept it right yeah no he he mm. is the standard and yes. he doesn't change his standard he doesn't change his law mm. He doesn't change, you know, it's not a trendy thing. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, it's not, well, I'll make an exception. No, it's, it's a standard mm -hmm. that everyone has to follow, mm -hmm. and he stands by it. And uh, he loves us enough that he wants us to make the right choices. Yeah. If we will just turn away from our sin and repent, like you said. And, you know, even the prophets in the Old Testament, when they were, yeah. you know, prophesying against even their own people, yeah. you know, they, they, they brought up, you know, repent, repent. turn your face back towards yes. God. And God is the source of your joy and happiness. He will fill that hole that you're filling right yes. now. You know, if, I tell a story about a, a mother who's calling her little girl. Mm -hmm. The little girl's inching closer to the street. Right. And the mother is calling her, honey, come back. Mm -hmm. Honey, come back. And the little girl is defiant. 
She oh, puts yeah. her hands on her little hips and says no, and then she takes a few more steps closer to the street. Right. Well, the mother is not trying to deny the child having a good time. Right. She's trying to protect the child from the trucks that are coming down the street. That she sees and knows, yeah. She sees. Yeah. The yeah. daughter has no idea of the danger she's in, and the mother is pleading, come back, come back, and, and the little girl continues until she's run over. Yeah. And sin... It's deceptive. We think we're going to have a good time if we participate in sin and, and we go contrary to God's standards. But God knows that the sin will destroy us. Right. We don't sense that. He's, he's telling us today, just like he told Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. you know, you can do anything you want except eat this one from yes. the you know, yeah. knowledge of, of good and evil. Yeah. He told us not to do something, just like he's don't telling us today. Yeah. Don't do this. I'm telling you for your own good. Yes. Trust in what I'm saying. And all we have to do is trust, and it'll be revealed to us to, to open up the truth to us. And does it keep us from sinning? No, we still make bad choices and bad yeah. decisions. Yeah. But we know that we have him there to point out. It's called conviction. And yes. we've talked about that in other episodes. And be, he partners with us. And he comes in and dwells. And he fills that empty hole that we've been trying mm -hmm. to fill. And we've talked about that before in other episodes. Mm -hmm. But it is. It's, he fills that empty hole. And, um, but sin, if we don't recognize what true sin is, which mm -hmm. has been given to us by God's law, mm -hmm. then we're, we're doomed. I mean, we're just absolutely yeah. doomed. You know? Sin really will have its, it takes its toll on us and yeah. its death. Yeah. Uh, I, I tell folks when I'm uh, teaching and preaching, I said, there's many, many systems of belief out there, many mm -hmm. religious systems, ways of living. And I say, well, but we all have one problem. It's death that's looming on the horizon. So choose one that, that overcomes death. Right. Well, Jesus has clearly risen from the dead. He's resurrected and he raised people from the dead many times during his earthly ministry. Right. So he has conquered death. And he has also given us a perfect standard to live by. He, yeah. he himself will um, uh, enable us to live according to God's commands. Right. And right. eventually he'll perfect us. Right. So he has everything in store for us if we'll only allow him to change right. us. And uh, I, I long for that myself. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think we have <laughs> completely mm -hmm. worn out the whole subject of yeah. sin. Sin. Yeah. I mean, we could sit and we could talk about it all yeah. day and bring it back around to the gospel, which we have in several yeah. things. But. Um, uh, is there any last thing that you want to add, or, or are we good? I'm good. Yeah, I think we're good. We've, okay. we've covered it pretty well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we again, we thank you guys for for joining us today, and we hope that you've gotten something out of it. And um, you know, if if you've been enlightened, or you've had a spark, or the light bulb has gone off, gone off, or you know, you want to share something with us, please share it on. Uh, you know, in the comment section. And also, you know, we want you to help us spread the word. And things just like this in these episodes, you know, use that share and like button uh, in your social media in, in how you've, uh, you know, however you're viewing us. So, yeah. Alan and I are hoping to provoke a lot of thought here. We're hoping people will think about what God's saying and, and just do some heart searching there. Think about it. And uh, uh, be sure to tune in every Thursday at 6 p.m. to catch the Word. And remember, have you treasured God's Word in your heart today?